Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Excessive Pop Culture Discussion. I'm your host, Daniel O'Brien. This is the unscripted pop culture show where we talk about everything that happened in pop culture this week. It has nothing to do with politics or the president. Every week, I will host, and I'll be joined by a rotating cast. Son of a bitch! Wow. Hi. It's you know Soren Maggie again. The two other people uh, will no longer be joining us. <laughs> yeah. Don't Maggie look in the closet. Beat them I don't up know and put on their clothes. <laughs> how this keeps happening, but... Uh, Joining me this week and for the rest of my life, Soren Bowie. Hi. Maggie Mayfish. Hi. Thanks for joining, guys. How's your mm -hmm. week going? Pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. Good. Great. Uh, so today <laughs> we're going to be talking about E3, and we're going to be talking about Bachelor in Paradise, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever weird thing Soren thinks is pop culture related <laughs> when it gets to be his turn. But first, I want to talk about uh, Celebrity Feud, so let's get into this week in pop culture. <laughs> So Celebrity Feuds right now, huge thing. Amber Rose, who is a model and actor and had like some kind activist. of singing career and activist. Yeah, yeah, she Instagrammed a photo of herself uh, exposing her, her pubic hair and uh, not her vagina or breasts or butt or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah well, pubic pu pu hair is pretty close. I know, it I know. It was close, but still. I know. <laughs> That's adjacent. Yeah, uh, and then Piers Morgan, who is the, that, uh, Fancy cartoon hedgehog from Toy Story 3. He oh, yeah. tweeted at her, uh, put it away, love. And she said, Good put impression. what away? And then they got into a Twitter fight where he wants her to stop posting pictures of herself because she's only doing it to get attention. And she's like, I kind of am. I'm trying to drive awareness for uh, Slut Walk, which is a, a, like the third year in a row that she's been doing this thing to uh, help people feel better about body issues and gender issues. Just like raise awareness for... Yeah. Mm -hmm. People who need awareness. And he's still doing this like, if a man did this, if a man posted naked pictures of himself on the internet, he'd go to jail. And she was like, I'm not naked in it. That's not, <laughs> that's not <laughs> where the action happens. Yeah. Then, oh, no. Does Pierce Morgan not know? He doesn't know. He, he, never, doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, know. he doesn't know. Uh, and then she tweeted at him a picture of Adam Levine from, uh, she's a, he's that guy that everyone's mom Things about when they masturbate. Yeah. Uh, it's him He's completely the fifth naked. Of the, of the maroons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, a hand is like covering his his wiener and balls. Nice. And she's like, would this be someone trying to get attention too? Is this? Would you say that this guy was was just like some tramp trying to get attention? Mm -hmm. he says, no, because he's trying to bring awareness to a cause about testicular cancer. And she's like, I have a cause too. <laughs> I don't understand how this is happening. Yeah. And then he tweeted a picture of himself naked laying down in front of a fireplace with like a uh, napkin over his junk for a Burger Blech. King ad. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Wait. <laughs> Pier, whose side is he on? He, it's not really clear. <laughs> he posted a picture of himself wearing, basically doing the Burt Reynolds, but instead of a puppy, he's got a, uh, just a under like David Hasselhoff. Just Burt a, Reynolds uh, has nothing. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, just got like a uh, purple napkin and it's like, uh, Burger King, you can f their burgers. I don't, you know, I don't understand. Also, that's weird that that exists. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's not all Whoppers are that big. No, yeah. it's it's just insane that Piers Morgan and Amber Rose are fighting on Twitter, and he's just losing so desperately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I love it. And well, also her charity. It started because um, I think it was uh, back in like 2013. Some women were picked up off the street, and the police officer told them, uh, if you don't dress like sluts, you wouldn't be sexually assaulted on the street. And like, uh, that was on record and he had to like uh, give an apology or whatever. But yeah, her cause is like um, uh, supporting, you know, wearing whatever you want and like gender yeah. identity. It's sad when a co like the bar for a cause is like, if we can get one thing through, let's just get it in writing somewhere that cops can stop calling women sluts. Please. <laughs> yeah, like right. that's, it's baby steps at this yeah. point. Can we just make right. sure that doesn't happen yeah. anymore? It also appears Morgan to be like, that's the hill I die on. Like, yeah. they know. No. Yeah. yeah, and it's crazy. I mean, if I was Piers Morgan and I saw myself being painted into that corner where she's like, here's Adam Levine and he's naked. What is, how is this any different? Your only out is to say, it's not any different. He shouldn't have done that either. To then say, yeah. it's fine. He's a boy and he <laughs> yeah. understands causes. Is like, oh he's digging no. his own grave. Oh. It's so deep. It's so deep. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> the other celebrity feud that's been going on this week is Katy Perry versus Taylor Swift, yes. which is mm -hmm. something that um, in a meeting, Soren and I explained to the rest of the team 
what was going like there's like a sales meeting or something that we, that yeah. we locked the doors and <laughs> explained it to them no one asked us to do they're this. not allowed out oh, I believe people this. were on the phone uh-huh. and I saw a moment where no one was talking so I just started <laughs> hey you guys heard about this feud <laughs> allegedly Taylor hired a bunch of Katy Perry's dancers mm-hmm. to go on tour with her uh, and then, all the way around and then right? no it started that way oh. and then Katy yes. came and took those dancers back one time, mm-hmm. and then Taylor Swift wrote Bad Blood, which is allegedly about Katy Perry and their yes. feud. And Katy Perry now has an album coming out, and she was like, I want to end this feud, Taylor, if you call me or text me, we can we can settle this. And and Taylor, who's a fucking shark, she's goat troll, she she's uh, shark. famously kept all of her music off Spotify and streaming services, and then the day Katy Perry's album came out, released all of her music <laughs> to the world. To just flood just, her, yeah, flood with noise. Yeah, Dang. and it's, it's and just Taylor Swift is, is Queen Cersei, I'll go to my grave on that, that she, that she is just like this calculating, beautiful yeah. genius. I mean, I believe that, because also another thing came out that after her and Calvin Harris broke up, mm-hmm. she did vocals on a, a very popular song that he produced, but she chose to do it anonymously, and afterwards it was like, he didn't give me credit for that song, and he was like, you asked, no. for it. Yeah. you asked for it. Yeah, it was the circumstances under which of the stealing of the backup dancers is that Katy Perry had backup dancers. She went on a break or whatever. Mm-hmm. She wasn't on tour anymore. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift then hired those dancers. And then when she went back to work, Katy was like, do you guys still want to work for me? And they were like, yeah. And then she took her dancers <laughs> back and Taylor Swift was like, no. no. <laughs> I will, no. Everyone here is going to burn. Like, Nobody crosses <laughs> Taylor Swift. I really uh, We're like all going to die one day. Why? Why are we flying? But I need the best dancers, or some of them, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) These specific ones. I also, I feel bad for Katy Perry, uh, I guess, Um, because she, as like a promotional stunt for her album, she spent four straight days live streaming every minute of her life and like hosting people, you know, because you need to do stunts now. You have to do, if you're Um. releasing an album, you have to do Lemonade. You have to do something big so people Mm -hmm. talk about it. They're like, well, I'm going to live in my house for four days with cameras everywhere, like a Big Brother house, and Taylor Swift is like, boop, just presses the button, and all of her music steals all of this attention <laughs> immediately. And now it's day two, and Katy Perry's like, well, f- this, stop watching me cook, everybody. Yeah, I'm so sick of this shit. Yeah. Um, I, just thinking about who those dancers are, I have to wonder if they're all just that one lanky kid with the Jansport backpack on, swinging his arms back and forth. Did you guys not see that video? No. Oh, oh yeah, no. She, he, she went on, uh, I don't know where it was, some, some late night talk show and she performed, or maybe, I don't know, some award show, but it, it was something. <laughs> and the only dancer there was this kid who just came out and, the, and smoke is all around him, and he's maybe like 14, and he just swings his arms back and forth <gasps> for like five minutes. Oh, it's fun. wow. Yeah. My dream can come true. <laughs> oh, yes. He's the one they're fighting over. <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> that's the guy. Oh, man. All right, Maggie, what do you have for us this week? All right, so uh, this is big news. ABC, Mm -hmm. uh, they canceled the Bachelor in Paradise show, Mm. which if you don't know, the Bachelor and Bachelorette shows are their highest rated shows. (laughs) And between each season, they have Bachelor in Paradise, which is where they take all the biggest uh, a-holes from the various shows. Oh, it's losers from the other... The bachelor. biggest personalities, yes. okay. yeah. The biggest personalities, uh, and put them all on an island and give them lots of alcohol. Apparently what happened was uh, one night one of the female contestants got very inebriated, and uh, something occurred in a pool that an associate producer saw this happen and uh, filed a sexual assault claim, which is... Kind of bananas, because that's like the first time this has ever happened on We've a dating We've been so show. lucky up We've until now. We've been so lucky, <laughs> I know. That this hasn't happened sooner is crazy. Um, and yeah, they sent everybody home. All the contestants are back home. They're not finishing the season. They're canceling it, um, which is just kind of crazy. They're putting yeah. everything on hold until they uh, go through like the legal process. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Which so is... it was just there was somebody who was not... Of, of of sound mind to, to yes, consent to consent uh, and apparently it was something to the sort of like light touching that kind of thing mm-hmm. um, and yeah I guess they even like reviewed the tapes and decided yeah we have to send everybody home so that's, oh that's very God. sad yeah obviously mm-hmm. but a, a tremendous step forward for us as a society that like that A, there are people speaking up, and mm-hmm. B, it matters that, that uh, a company like ABC will 
shut Stop down production. Uh, yeah. their entire production on the, on this mm -hmm. cash cow because a wrongdoing happened. You know, like this, right. this is we've come a long way from Roger Ailes sexually assaulting his entire staff for <laughs> nine hundred yeah. years or yeah. however long that f***ing Galapagos mm -hmm. turtle end up living. Yeah, yeah, that's and it's especially that it's somebody who you said it was associate producer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's somebody the who's producer. yeah, that's somebody who would be like the show must go on. Like there's yeah. so much exactly. money riding on this, mm -hmm. and that's somebody who stopped it all and said, no, I don't care what it, what what we have to eat in order yeah. to do this. Yeah, like this needs to stop. It's that's crazy. great. And then yeah. to me, it was like reminding me of like you know we think uh, reality TV is like scripted, mm -hmm. uh, but like stuff like this happens, and it's like well, it's not that scripted. Yeah, and also, right. like, when reality TV is too real, it's just, like, not funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, when a murder yeah. is on the dating show. That, right. uh, <laughs> what's yeah. his face? That's right. Right? Yeah. We've come that a long happens. way from uh, MTV's Jersey Shore, where Snooki gets punched in the face. Yeah, and, and MTV funny. is like, we're not going to air that in the episode, but, uh, but we'll, like, show it to you. <laughs> Right over and over again <laughs> as a promo for the show. Oh, right. We think this is, like, too dark for the episode, but, like, if you haven't been watching this show, it's wild. Check it out. Yeah, uh -huh. Look, this woman gets punched in the face by a stranger. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. It's weird to like juxtapose those, to mm -hmm. put those two together yeah. because, wow, that would not fly today. Yeah. yeah. There's also the an associate producer speaking up uh, to fix this reminds me. I, can, I wish I could get into specifics, but there's a person who uh, used to work for us, a freelance editor for us, mm -hmm. and she was working on a big comedy movie last year. Uh, it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. And in a very low level position, but they did like either a script reader or an early screening, and they're like, "What does everyone think?" And she was like, "That one scene is technically rape, so change it." Oh. And they were like, and, "You know, six thousand guys were like, oh yeah, she's right. We should change that.'" And then they changed the scene in the movie. And it's just, uh, it's yeah. Just like all these little heroes popping up, making yeah. things better. Sometimes right. it just takes a different perspective. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That was wise of you, Maggie. Oh, you know what? Every once in a while, I say something. Once a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's a weekly show. <laughs> Soren. Oh, what do you have for us this week, Soren? Uh, okay. So, uh, this is pop culture related. Okay. But it's going to take How? me a while to get there. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> um, so United, the airline, has, <laughs> has gone full heel. Where they're not even trying to, re, uh, to refurbish their image or try oh, no. and make everyone think that they're better. They just keep making huge mistakes. <laughs> and... and, and being completely unapologetic about it. This flight that was going from Newark to Italy to Venice, and Woo. as they're on the tarmac, that was I'm for sorry, Newark, by the way. That, that wasn't for, for even, yeah. okay. that wasn't for like, oh, Dan loves Italy. No, <laughs> Dan's a big fan of Newark. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be a fan? LGA that forever. <laughs> um, and so the, these, this newlywed couple are on their honeymoon. They look out the window and on the tarmac, they just see the wing erupt jet fuel like it just starts pouring out the side of the plane and so he gets up out of his seat and goes to the flight attendant and she's like sit back down and he's like no 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 i think there's i think there's a real problem and she's like is it an emergency and he goes i don't know <laughs> and she says to him everything is fine go sit down and uh it took him a while to like actually even get these these flight attendants to look out the window and when they finally did they're like oh yeah that's not right yeah. and there's a step in flight attendant school where they're like listen you're the most powerful thing on the planet. <laughs> because I've, go, I've never seen anyone get more corrupt with on such little amounts of power. They milk the, sir, yeah. that's Ooh. not gonna fit. <laughs> I put on a sign that says, you need to be strapped to your <laughs> seat. Did you see that sign? <laughs> when you're in my tube, you belong to me. <laughs> um, so anyway, they finally my figured tube. it out. The, uh, the, the pilot was like, oh yeah, we can't take off with this. And then the flight attendants to their I mean, respectfully, they came back to these, this couple and they said, hey, sorry about that. Come to the cockpit. Uh, the captain wants to meet you. What is he, nine? <laughs> so they, <laughs> yeah. they go to the cockpit. give you a plane. Because the, the, the captain, the, co -pilot, the pilot, the co-pilot are like, oh, check it out. We have footage from up here of what it looks like. And they had never seen anything like it either. So they're showing them the footage and then it becomes clear what's going on. They go, listen, just be kind to us on social media. Like, <gasps> they're trying to like butter them up. I'm like, hey, you get to see the cockpit. Oh. And they're like, if you're nice to us, United will take care of you. And they were like, yeah, all right, no sweat. So if they get off the plane, realize that United can't book them on another flight. They go over to Delta, and Delta's going to help them get on a flight the next morning. But then they have to sleep in the baggage claim. And the way that United hooked them up was they gave them a food voucher. Hey! <laughs> yeah. 
and oh. didn't help them get uh, didn't help them get on another flight. Wow. Well, EWR that airport does have a Chili's to go, so that's <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I revised my whole. I, the, the I mean, have you had from. that queso dip? Worth so it. it gets even worse because then United sent out basically a press release on what happened. Didn't acknowledge that this, these people basically saved the day, but said, you know, while taxing on the runway, United Flight 170 traveling to Newark, from Newark to Italy. Uh, that there was this fuel leak and we canceled the flight. Sorry, we had to reaccommodate people. And then it said that um, we apologize to our customers for the inconvenience. Our team helped provide customers with hotel accommodations for the night and are working to get them back on their way to Venice today. They didn't help this couple get on their flight. Oh. They also didn't give them accommodations. And the woman who said, like, posted this all on Tumblr, because she was mm -hmm. the, I'm sorry, on Twitter, because mm -hmm. she was the one who saw the, the fuel leaking out of the plane. Now everyone's responding to her and they're like, I was on that flight, they didn't give me shit. <laughs> and so it great. they're like, what caused the fuel leak? Some uppity passenger who refused to sit down when the light was on. Oh, right. So the very same day, in uh, Houston, in the George Bush airport there, this 71-year-old man was arguing about his flight to a flight attendant in the terminal. United and flight? I'm not a, uh, yeah, United. It's United again. And it's not a flight, it's not a flight attendant. It was just a man who was working for United at mm. the, the kiosk or mm -hmm. whatever the desk is. And the, the guy decided eventually that he had enough and pushed the 71-year-old man <gasps> to the ground and knocked him out and then stood over him for a little while and then walk away. And there's footage of all of this. And no one goes to help this dude. There's just a sprawled man with like a yard sale. Like it's just cane over there, baggage <laughs> over there. Like, and he's sprawled out on the ground. And nobody's doing anything. And like this guy walks away like, that's what I thought. <laughs> what? And uh, yeah, and this is a United employee and United had to apologize for that as well because there's knocked out a 71 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> so it could have been someone it could important. Have been. All old men it could have been. Lee it could have been a seventy-one-year-old innocent man, <laughs> yeah. also. It could or have been Stanley. Stanley, or it could have been just like a Stanley. Yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> um, and so this, these both happened on the exact same day. And oh boy. And the only reason that everybody knows about them, and the only reason that these airlines are like accountable for this kind of thing now, is because Twitter and people putting this stuff up on mm -hmm. uh, Facebook and on. YouTube. And so there's video of both of these things and all of that went viral. Otherwise, I don't think United would have ever put out any sort of apology oh, or press no. release. They preemptively were like, right. oh, we got to control this story. How do we make it seem fine? It's eh, just a fuel ink. And, Everything's fine. And so I was like, why is it like, how come airlines can constantly get away with this? It's because there are like four airlines that own 80% of all of airline travel yeah. and you're mm -hmm. stuck with them. They're like the Comcast of the air, United. Yeah. And they can do kind of whatever they want to the point where like for a while we were, everyone was like you got to give them a break jet fuel is very expensive in 2014 it was like the highest it's ever been mm -hmm. and then by 2016 it's a lot of money for something <laughs> that can't even melt steel <laughs> oh boy <laughs> and then, then in 2016 the prices had dropped dramatically 2017 it's even mm -hmm. lower but the the ticket prices haven't gone down to right. accommodate that but so like they're going to make as much and money as yeah. they can yeah. because who, who else are you going to go to spirit i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> no you want to fly spirit you get beaten with a cane on the flight <laughs> i'm sure of it um and so they they're just like they can gouge however they want the only the only way that you can ever get back at them is these kinds of things like these people can post the video and be like look look what i look what happened on my flight it was yeah. spewing jet fuel and we almost all died <laughs> United is the one where uh, they dropped scorpions on people, right? Yes, United is the one where a scorpion fell out of the baggage hole, mm -hmm. uh, or the, yeah, like that, the top baggage yeah. hole, and fell onto a man. <laughs> and somebody next to him went, a scorpion! <laughs> <laughs> a scorpion! And that was just days after that, that man had been uh, dragged off the flight. Yeah. Oh, damn. And yeah. like, nothing happened. No one boycotted right. United after that. In fact, bonk, oh no, a scorpion! And everyone's like, oof! All right. <laughs> really right. trying to get to Tampa or whatever. And I think that that's when they realized, that's where United like held their breath for a second. They're like, generally I don't think airlines have scorpions fall on people. But because everyone kind of just let it, the story mm. go, they were like, we could do anything. Right. This is, oh let's God. push down 71 year old men. This is, <laughs> this is United Airlines in the Truman Show where he's like walking into traffic and None of the cars are hitting me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think I'm God. I'm invincible. Well, like, they also get a bunch of government like subsidies and stuff, which is like, yeah, yeah. that's why trains are and so expensive. It sucks because for, for <laughs> I <laughs> like trains. <laughs> I would take trains that's, all day. That, I wanted that to be on your, on your tombstone. I that's, like trains. I like trains. <laughs> well, that was this yeah. week in headlines. Let's mm. uh, move on to the main story. Do, 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 do the main story. Or we can just use the music we have. Yeah, I think we. That. Yeah. Oh, is there any little interlude that comes up?
E3. E3 was uh, this week, the week that we're recording this thing. E3 is the big celebration of all things video games and, and all the big players come out and they're like, here's the new system we're doing, here's the new games that we're doing, probably a Call of Duty. And we see a lot of footage that to get us hyped for games coming out in the next year. Maggie, you, you take issue with this, this footage in general? Yeah, well, I, I love video games and I love uh, getting excited about video games. I think E3, like as a whole, is kind of just like, just for YouTubers to, mm -hmm. you know, I guess for us to comment on. Hi. <laughs> Those stupid YouTubers. Those stupid YouTubers, sorry, you know, video games. But yeah, I like the trailers, they don't actually include um, like gameplay footage. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of like getting excited for something that we don't know is going to be good until another year from now when we see the actual trailer. Yeah. Right, it's not even not even that they're not showing you gameplay footage, but they're also not showing you like, because very often it's cutscenes, it's these movie yeah. intro things. But even that is not the actual cutscene you're going to see in the game. It's right. like they have a team of people that do CGI movies mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. their games that on processors that can't exist in your... PS4 or your Xbox One box. They've, Xbox One box. They, they've, <laughs> I know. They've made their name pretty wacky. <laughs> I know. Um, that said, mm -hmm. Mario Odyssey, the new Mario Brothers game, yeah. came out, and it's like Mario 64, where it's an open world and you're following him instead of doing like a side scroller or anything mm -hmm. like that. And it looks fing bonkers. <laughs> There's one where one of the levels takes place in what looks like an actual city with like full-sized men walking around with, with like briefcases yeah. and like there's cars it looks like Grand Theft Auto yeah. and he's still like <laughs> squat little Mario. <laughs> the strange thing that they've added in this game is that Mario takes his hat and throws it on anything like a Goomba for example mm -hmm. and then the Goomba's soul goes away we don't know and Mario now inhabits well, that he's soul. he's dead. The we Goomba's know. dead and Mario yeah. can now control the Goomba. He can also hat warp into Bullets mm -hmm. and cars yeah. and Anything. a very lifelike, realistic Tyrannosaurus Rex that yeah. exists in this world. That was a yes. I think it's cool. into even it goes as far as the um, plants that come out and shoot fireballs. Mm -hmm. He can warg into one of the fireballs. Yeah. Dang. And it's it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the the game has never been uh, bound by the laws of reality before, but this is like Painting I don't know wings. why. For me, I was like, yeah, Mario. He eats a leaf and then he's a raccoon and the raccoon flies. I'm on board, right. but now this uh, is like, this might be a bridge too far for me, although I'm very excited. Like, yeah. I, I think a game like this should exist where you can like, I can just be anything with a toss of the old hat, mm -hmm. but I don't know why it's a Mario game. And there was yeah. an AMA with the producer, and they asked him, why can he possess people all of a sudden? And the answer was, so when we wanted to create Mario games this time around, we wanted to focus on the actions Mario can do, and in previous Mario games, he's able to get power-ups and new abilities. But this time around, when we were making many different prototypes and changed our approach and found capturing or possessing enemies worked well, so we stuck with that. <laughs> That's not an answer. Yeah. Hey, why'd you do this thing? Well, we wanted to do something, and we did this. <laughs> I end. think I've answered the question. <laughs> There's a whole new implication to that, which is that Mario has not been complicit in this the entire time. He's just been wearing the hat. <gasps> yeah. And is the he hat Mario? has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but there is no hat. right. He's that it was just host. he yeah. was just a little guy <laughs> who then the hat attached oh, no. itself to. I think they also get mustaches as soon as they get the yeah, hat on. Of course. So the hat mustache just appeared on him, mm -hmm. and then it's just been this this poor plumber has been wearing this mm -hmm. hat this entire time and has been <laughs> forced his body's been forced into all these scenarios yeah. where he dies over and over again. But I feel like every Mario game kind of has a, like the exact same setup. Like it's a Mario game in a world, and there's like one weird thing about it. Either yeah. you're jumping into paintings or it's Mario Sunshine and you're like cleaning up a place and this is just the hat thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of just like replace one thing with something like that could be fun to play with. Yeah, I'm excited about it. It looks I'm, really cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it looks it, like a whole lot of fun. There's a lot of, I have so many questions though because he goes into a, another city. Mario's supposed to be from our world, but he yeah. goes into a normal city and everyone's bodies are much more normal there. They yeah. look like mm -hmm. actual humans, except Mario's still this squat yeah. little weirdo who is running around, which makes me think, Oh, you were the luckiest guy that you fell yeah. down that whatever that that hole was. <laughs> yeah, that that, like took there. you to this other world here. where it was like, oh yeah, everybody looks a little more like you here. Yeah. I do Just think it's stick around. I do think it's important to point out that, hey, there's no such thing as a normal body. Aww. <laughs> Except there is. Mario's body's so weird. <laughs> if you saw him, you'd be You'd have a really hard time just <laughs> ignoring that. <laughs> uh, we also found out that there's going to be a new Sonic the Hedgehog game called Sonic Mania, and I'm 
very, we'll get to you, oh, Maggie. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just, ex- I just have a face on. I'm very, <laughs> I just learned this face. I am very excited about this game. I've always been a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Oh, that was a joke opportunity. I could have been dramatically mispronouncing Sonic the way I do Mario. <laughs> just, uh, never uh, discuss Sanic. it. Sanic. Sanic. <laughs> uh, and they're really doing a return to form where it's they're not. It's not fucking Dreamcast Sonic. Get the, get out of my house with that. Yeah. It's. Mm-hmm. 2D scroller, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and they're all buddies, and a lot of the levels are the same, and they've got a bunch of new, exciting levels, but no magic hat stuff. There's some other really dope things that they've added where he can, like, get a bubble. You know how he used to get, like, the protective bubble that yeah, if he gets hit shield. once? Yeah, the shield. Boing. Now Boing. he has a fire one where he can, he's got a ball of fire around him, and he can literally burn bridges by running right, across right. them and just, mm-hmm. like, Burn Emerald City to the ground, and I'm, I'm so, so ready for this game. We've sort of lost sight of his original goal, I think, yeah, when he yeah. starts burning <laughs> Emerald City to the Absolutely. ground. Absolutely. Um, Just nuking I'm, birds uh, as he goes past them. Yeah. <laughs> Just freeing rabbits and, <laughs> and lighting setting them on them fire. On fire. <laughs> <laughs> I took great comfort in the old games that I grew up on, so, uh, ne- like, games are very complex for me. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. but a Sonic is coming out that's just like the old Sonic. So I bought a PlayStation 4 this week. So now I'm gonna buy oh. a Sonic game and no other games. There's some more context to this. You should all know that Dan, as a child, when he would mow the lawn, instead of listening to like whatever popular music was on at the time, he, in his headphones would be Casino Zone or yeah. whatever. Mystic <laughs> Cave Zone. Uh, music. That's my 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 one complaint is that Masato Nakamura, who did all the music for all the OG Sonic games. Uh, he's not returning for this. They're getting this guy, uh, T. Lopez, who's very good. Yeah. I mean, his claim to fame was doing a bunch of Sonic remixes on YouTube. And oh, well, uh, that's cool. I've listened to the stuff that he's doing, and it's, it's as close as you can get to the great Masato Nakamura. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut any of the shots on me. I want it known that I didn't look down for anything. <laughs> I want it known that it's all up here forever. Yeah. Oh boy. But Maggie, you don't like this game because... Yeah, to me, I just, I'm just i not a huge fan of the 2D scroller. I like Sonic being uh, in a more freeing environment. Um, yeah, that's just that's my preference. I like him snowboarding through San Francisco. That's what I want my Sonic. <laughs> did you guys not play Sonic Adventure? No, no, I did. I was actually no. It was chaos for me because it's a because he moves so fast. He moves so fast. It's so great. But, but, but you just run into you, you fly off of cliffs. You fly like oh, into enemies mm. because you can't see where. At least with 2D, I can like look ahead. I know mm-hmm. where I'm going. Yeah, maybe you're just not as good player. Yes, me. that's exactly thousand right. percent. That's okay, one hundred percent what I'm saying. <laughs> the, but it was the the, the Sonic right. We, Knuckles was first introduced. That was the first mm. time that I understood. Well, Knuckles was so scary. <laughs> he was a I bad guy at Knuckles. first. Yeah, that you. That was the first time I understood where you could uh, actually play within a game something other than what the game wanted you to do. Because mm. Knuckles mm. could climb walls. As soon as you could play as Knuckles, like you could just climb to the top of the level mm. and then just <laughs> coast over the top of the entire level, or like <laughs> hang out up there or do whatever you wanted yeah. to. And you, no, that's not what you do in a Sonic. You follow the rules. It, you start there and you go there. <laughs> And you get the things, and you free the animals, and, and then your brain releases something that makes you feel good. <laughs> I, oh, Dan. <laughs> I just oh, liked that Knuckles didn't have to play by those rules. Knuckles, yeah. Knuckles could just like hang out up yeah. on top of everything. He still plays the by the no rules. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I got my, I'm very excited for this game. I can't freaking wait for it. When I got my, because I got my PlayStation 4 controller, and there's mm-hmm. like. Top buttons and a touch screen and all these things. And I'm just staring and just like knowing I'm not going to use. <laughs> my hands haven't evolved to use the top buttons. I'm 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 this mode still. <laughs> Do you remember as a I child? I hope I don't have games that need them. When your parents would try and play with Nintendo and how yeah. basic shit that box controller was, yeah. and they would be like, this on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh and now that's you. Are you grown yeah. into that? Hmm. Yeah. You have more I'm a parent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just irrelevant. Bunch of other new games coming out. There's going to be a new Yoshi game, a new Kirby game, mm-hmm. a Metroid 4. Ooh, Kirby. Kirby These are all so the Switch good. games, right? Yeah. 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 Kirby looks like uh, just like an updated Crystal Shards, which yeah. is one of my favorite games. So. That's, I mean, there are a lot of other <laughs> systems out there that are getting there are, games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going get, <laughs> yeah, to get yeah, to yeah. a lot of these. Oh, okay. I know that Maggie wanted to, Kirby. she's excited about Kirby. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I never got, yes, does that's he, good. He, does he <laughs> Thank you. The only Thank time you. I've encountered Kirby is in Smash Brothers. Does he, in, he does the same thing as Mario in this new game, right? Where like he sucks somebody in and then he yeah. becomes sort of them. Yes, he and you can like mix different powers, which uh, in the Crystal Shards, that was uh, kind of like the 
that you would have to memorize what mm -hmm. different like things would mix uh, oh. to go through the levels. Now, so. Kirby, he boy or he girl? Uh, no, such <laughs> thing. He is bubblegum. <laughs> it. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, bu they. bubblegum is gendered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm uh, less excited about games for a system that I don't have. Like, but if mm -hmm. Nintendo came out at this thing and said Super Smash Brothers is coming to Switch, then I'm. Buying Super Smash Brothers, then. yeah, and, uh, but they know. didn't. They didn't announce it this time. They, I don't think they're gonna make it for another couple of years. I think the last. But I'll be I'm even made, older. I know, I know. <laughs> they said they were taking a break from uh, making Smash games for oh. a couple of years. Oh yeah, yeah. certainly. Why, why yeah. go after you like your right. your You're A list? Main, yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> a trailer was released for Wolfenstein 2. A lot of people yeah. were really excited about that. It's one of the most bonkers trailers I've Very ever seen. Weird. It starts with like live um, action, mm -hmm. live action commercials <laughs> right. in a world that. Uh, assumes the Nazis won and has spread to America. It sounds like because it's it's that seems to be it, it's yeah. like game shows that are called German or else or, so, or German or nothing. German or else, yeah. yeah. And it's all commercials with all these uh, terrifying looking Aryan people. Mm -hmm. There's a They're happy though. They're yeah. smiling. Go yeah. <laughs> There's a cartoon where the hero is clearly a Nazi who shatters the earth, and then the Statue of Liberty splits in half, and then we're yeah. all supposed to cheer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then we look at the game, and it's and it's. Allegedly going to be a Wolfenstein game. <laughs> right now, it's a guy. It's like six and a half minutes of a guy joining a resistance somewhere. Yeah. Bj joining mm. the resistance, and the ideally fighting cool. Nazis eventually. Yeah, I guess. Right. I don't know how much of that is all cutscenes and like what you could mm -hmm. possibly be doing before you join that resistance. Yeah. Like, like what what the game consists of before that point? Because otherwise, you get like. Heavily 15 drinking. minutes of exposition <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of like him waking up in whatever the hospital that is, <laughs> learning to walk again, yeah. taking care of his atrophied muscles for a few months. Right. <laughs> knowing that this is knowing that I've just bought a system and this is the future of video games, I like that I can wake up, start a game, and like make coffee and <laughs> hang out with my dog while it's going, and then eventually be like, "Oh, it's back. ready for me now." Okay, shoot Nazi, good, and then just back to my life for a while. I'm to, of the opposite opinion as Maggie, where these trailers I love. The trailers yeah. for games where I don't I don't give a shit if I get to see gameplay or not <laughs> because the, all they're doing it's like an old school trailer for a movie before we started giving away everything in the movie it was just setting the tone for what this world is going to be mm -hmm. and yeah. like here's the atmosphere you can generally expect from what this game um, that's and that's what I want I want to be able to like see all that uh, yeah. and they like, and get really excited about uh, like um, beyond good and evil. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Mm. It's Beyond a Good and Evil 2. Like, prequel to a Ubisoft game that came out 15 years ago, and people have been waiting for it for a very long time. Okay. For 15 years? Rough. <laughs> Maggie. Put it, yeah! Maggie, you <laughs> snake! Yeah. It has this very fifth element feel to the whole thing, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. just, the world is something that I'm excited about, and think, oh, that looks cool. We don't see an ounce of gameplay in that. We no. see this, like, Cockney Street monkey with a grapple hook <laughs> hand yeah. talk to a, a, a pig with a... Long Fu, Ma Fu Manchu, yeah. and the monkey robot trades him a golden pig for this CD that he wants. Yeah, still using CDs, yeah. by the yeah. way. Oh, wow. And yeah. then it turns out the golden pig was chocolate, and, you, and it was a scam. And we watched the, the cool monkey escape, yeah. like grappling hook stuff. And I know that I can't play that, but I'm still like, that's me, I'm that one. Look, <laughs> at, look at what I'm doing. <laughs> and he gets on a motorcycle, and they, it's, 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 like, it's very much like some weird, like, Steampunk, Destiny plus Firefly right. plus Monkey, mm. and I'm I'm here for it. And I watch trailers like God of War, which is a series that I played all the way through and, and I enjoy. But I also know, watching the trailer, this is the best it's going to be. Because as soon as I start playing the game, I mm. learn about three moves that I really like, and that's it. Yeah. Throughout the, the whole game, like those are the ones I'm going to do. Yeah. There's other ones that are either too complicated or they don't look as cool. And, like, and so but everyone's going to die this one exact way. Mm -hmm. God of War is doing... A really cool thing with that, like they're really building on that franchise because this installment, the God of War has a son. We don't know what it's the God of yet, but like yeah. the God of War is now the game is killing things, I'm sure, but also <laughs> like figuring out how to raise your kid as a God and yeah. like, and like he's Aww. grappling with the violence that he's done in all the past games, and that's gonna inform the gameplay somehow. It's like well, that's right. always sort of been the narrative because he's always been trying to avenge his family who mm -hmm. died, but it was his fault that they died. Yeah. And I don't know completely in the narrative where this new child has come from, because right. um, I haven't been following it Isn't this closely, also the video game series where you, where you, you like f***ing it? Like, like yeah. Does, he, yeah, you can. Oh, like you, as, as games? Yeah. <laughs> you can. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's more tasteful, though. They, like, 
that's panned away, and then okay. you just see like a table rocking. I don't need to use any of the top oh, buttons to do it, yeah. right? Just I can just rocking. you gotta use the buttons. You gotta ah, get the buttons all right. of them. Yeah, you got the buttons right. You gotta like do it in the right motion oh. and everything, and like you gotta go slow sometimes and fast sometimes. Damn, Pierce Morgan is not gonna be able to. Uh, <laughs> that game. Oh. That's, it's such a great jump to be to Pierce Morgan tweets a picture of himself in like a hamburger diaper, and you're like, I bet you can't fucking video games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet your Sims suck. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, but yeah, that's it. The game is is he now he's got his a kid with him who's like yeah he's got to like take care of this kid and like the kid's like am I am I cursed because uh, Kratos is cursed in this yeah. and he's like I don't know <laughs> I don't know and now it's all Norse mythology which is kind of cool because yeah. and it seemed like they might be somewhat dabbling in like Hindu mythology too because sure. there are some characters that look very familiar but it would be really cool to just watch him now jump out of uh, ancient Greek mythos and like and go into like. Uh, now let's go see what happened in the Old Testament and see who yeah. can kill there. <laughs> <laughs> There's also an Assassin's Creed coming out, probably. Uh, there is, yeah. I'm, there I'm is. most excited about Anthem, which yes. you uh, design your own mech suit and what it looks like and what it can do, and then like you like, it's real. You just mm -hmm. like, like you have it, and you fight and hunt monsters, and uh, that's not to be confused with. Another game coming out this year called Monster Hunter. Oh, uh, yes. this is a Hunted Monsters, I think. Hunted Monsters, mm -hmm. I think, is what it's called. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, but in this one, wrong. does anybody you... know? Is it Hunted Monsters? Uh, it's Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. Okay. All right. We're leaving it all in, baby. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, I'm very excited to build a mech suit and fly around because they yeah. can fly and then go underwater. Also, it looked and beautiful, like flying through the, like the yeah. forest, and like yeah. there was like like crystals falling. Yeah, like, and you you watch them in this forest. They get to a spot where there's a big monster, and uh, your only goal in the game is to kill monsters. But it's two people playing together, and the player decides. Well, we'll come back to that one later, and they go find yeah. an easier monster to fight. That's sort of my vibe. That's, yeah. that's my anyone, vibe. Who has seen me play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn here on the website? You've watched me murder a bunch of turkeys <laughs> while like cyborg dinosaurs were in the background wanting to play, yeah. and I'm just like turkey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I can shoot that turkey with a flaming arrow. <laughs> oh, I can. I can. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the everything about that game. But like, there's like these little nuances where they're, you're flying around in the trailer, and you can see going underneath a canopy and just brushing up against some of the yeah. vines and the vines move. Yeah. And you're like, you can touch anything yeah. here. Like, it's That's all what I'm a sucker for in games, like realism, just like yeah. tiny little details. Yeah, like, I, like right around uh, Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, where <laughs> when that game yeah. came out, they were like, by the way, you could shoot fucking anything, whatever you want. And I was like, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. I'm shooting boxes yeah. and trees. This is cool. Yeah. This yeah. Is, it's kind of the opposite of um, uh, the Uncharted that just came out. Like it seems like it's very, you know, like interactive, but really you can't do that much. You can't like, yeah. you know, shoot random civilians. It's kind yeah. of like still really contained. Uh, and kind of I boring. like to think that I like all of that realism in games, but then I realize the games that I play are things like Lego Batman. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, I just <laughs> oh, want a world where I can f everything right. up. Right. Me like, too. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like I can destroy anything here. Mm -hmm. There's there's a, a game. Shoot. Uh, did you watch the one that the Prison Break game? Uh, I did, yeah. yeah. It's called uh, A Way Out. A Way Out, yeah. Oh. It's these two guys in prison who need to work together. And to find a way out? To find a way out of prison. Uh -huh. And then they get out of prison and like, you see them in the, the woods walking around and you see like, they go to see the daughter of one of the guys who was in prison. And they're like, hey, I just wanted to see my daughter. And it seemed really touching, like a good indie film. And I'm like, what the f does anything? How do you play this game? Like, what, like it, does, it felt like, less like a game and more like they had made a movie and they want you to, every once in a while, press square to get to the next part of their movie. It's really hard to tell what the gameplay is going to be. Yeah, it does. It seems like the most pivotal moments mm -hmm. in it are all like, oh, there's no way I'm playing that. There's <laughs> one guy jumping over a, a cliff edge and yeah. some other guy trying to catch him. And I'm like, I don't even know which guy I am. Like, <laughs> I'm just sort right. of rooting for both of them. And if you have to play with another person, then I, I'm going to make a lot of enemies in video games real soon because <laughs> oh, no. I can't. I mean, some of those buttons, you guys remember, they're just off limits for me. It's a so bar. It's a so bar. It's funny you say that because uh, you like the idea of the new Sonic coming out. Mario did a, a similar thing uh, where they created a game that felt very much like the old versions of Mario. Yeah. And you can play a team version, and it, it's, it can destroy relationships. Sure. Like, if you play with somebody else, because the screen moves on no matter what, if mm. one person keeps moving on. So, and so who have you lost? <laughs> <laughs> so, you yeah, there's, people finish this game with Thousand Yard Stairs because they, 
everyone they used to know and love is gone. <laughs> yeah. There's, if they did that a way out footage with me and a guy is jumping, I'm the other guy on the side of the cl cliff and you see me crouch, turn around, fire a flare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just plummets down this pit. <laughs> How does that turkey? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just want to see if I could do it. Shoot that cloud. <laughs> yeah. I, did. I, I would love if everything we saw in the, the trailer was just cutscenes and then when they cut to gameplay, it is exactly Kung Fu from Nintendo. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's double dragon. You're just like walking around eating whole roast turkeys. <laughs> All right, do you guys have anything more to say about video games? Well, there are a lot of games that I don't play because I don't have a newer console. But mm -hmm. I always feel tricked this time of year in the same way where I used to listen to the radio and get tricked into listening to Christian rock, where I'll, uh -oh. be, I'll, oh. be, I'll be looking at a YouTube video and there'll be a trailer for something that looks cool. And I'll be like, I love movie trailers. Let's see what this movie is. And I'll watch the first three minutes of it before I'm like, Oh, this is a this is a fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a dummy, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess uh, uh, Skull and Bones I thought looked pretty they tight. So real. Which one yeah, was Skull and Bones? It's the like pirate. It kind of seems like Assassin's Creed minus the assassin. You're a pirate. You're kind of like in charge of like a pirate. So creed. not that Assassin's so Creed, whether assassin. you were a pirate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's but a different one, but same thing, but just a yeah. different character. Uh, it looks beautiful, and if. There's a pirate in it, I'll probably play it, so. Oh, there's yeah. a new Shadow of Colossus, which is an yes. awesome mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of like beautiful games like Anthem, like Shadow of Colossus is just like a portrait. It's amazing looking. Is Shadow of Colossus also the, the subheading for Wolfenstein 2? No. Isn't it something of Colossus? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> well. Copycat. I'm, sure we'll, Dan. I'm sure we'll fix it in post. <laughs> the shows are going great. <laughs> going great. Good. Sounds like Maggie won E3 because there's going to be a pirate game. Yeah. You lost because you were tricked again. Yeah. I lost because I because money. And your fingers don't work on those top yeah. buttons. Yeah. Your fingers don't damn work. <laughs> Gotta You're get one of those a surgeries. Mario in a human world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah little... I'm exactly a Mario in a human world. <laughs> oh, that's a no. really good one, man. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right. Let's turn to uh, reader, comment, viewer questions. <laughs> Bluebird1770 said, how do you see all the reaction shows changing pop culture over the next 10 years? That's like oh. Walking Dead, or, or Talking Dead, and mm -hmm. Talking Bad, and Talking Preacher, I guess. Why bother with that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's, it's strange, it's gonna all seem hypocritical because we're doing a show where we talk about pop culture right yeah. now. Well, we're but, talking about them talking about the Yeah, stuff, so. like for years we were doing uh, this show, After Hours, which is four people sitting around uh, heavily scripted deconstructing pop culture and people responded to it because they were like oh this is just like sitting with my friends talking about a movie we just mm. saw and we thought it was that vibe coupled with the amount of research and, and thoroughness that we put into it and then Talking Dead came out and it was like no I just want people who Talk. watch the show to talk about it it doesn't matter right it, like this uh. is scratching like that's an itch that exists now that uh, just is begging to be scratched for lots of shows. There's a huge podcast industry mm. that is just people talking about Bachelor and Bachelorette. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't like that. I don't like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, it bothers me when like showrunners uh, start to take an input from mm -hmm. like fandoms and like after talks. It's yeah. like they yeah. got you gotta keep that separate because that's gonna get super messy. They don't know what they want from yeah. their TV show. They want you to make it, then they want to tell you if they like it or don't. And like yeah, it. certainly we're complicit in this, but it's the explosion of the hot take. Yeah. And the hot take is is not usually very good. And so yeah. you come up, you end up with so much just noise. Yeah. That uh, it, and these theories around the show that I don't think are particularly good. I guess occasionally have good ones, but I'm with you that I don't mm -hmm. like it when the show is then like embraces something from the real world and yeah. brings it into the show. Yeah. That It feels like it's a corruption then. Too true. Everyone make sure you tune in <laughs> this summer for season two of Winter is Taking Forever, our Game of Thrones. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, we're definitely doing. Um, Twitter user at E-W-A-Z-X-C. What once common movie trope would you like to see come back? Ooh. I have seen these questions in advance. Yeah, go ahead. So I yeah. theoretically yeah. would have prepared one to do yeah. while you guys were thinking about oh, what yours were This is a good stall. You're just playing this. Uh, yeah. No, it's just not happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do, there was a thing I used to really like, uh, which was in Westerns, when a guy would get shot, he would immediately go, 
and grab the wound and hold it for a little while and then kind of lay down yeah. as opposed to like <laughs> being shot across the room. And I feel like that's, there's probably more realis realism to that, that when you get shot, when you watch actual footage, which, I mean, don't, but when pe you see like body cam footage and stuff of people getting shot, they just sort of fall down or like they get shot mm -hmm. and then they're still up and they're gunning with adrenaline or buzzing with adrenaline and then eventually they just sort of fall down. Yeah. But you don't get blown away. You don't, it's not, you're not a meat sack that gets like a uh, pink mist flying out from behind you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You, in, in Western stuff, somebody gets shot and they'd be like, oh, f <laughs> ah, and it's then they then they'd fall <laughs> off the balcony. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess that yeah. if I had to think off the top of my head. Yeah. It's a neat yeah. little cute one. I guess like uh every sometimes when films have like a strong female character, um, they make her very like one dimensional or just like boring or mm -hmm. like what why would mm -hmm. she do that thing? She's but, flawless. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, or mm -hmm. flawless or something strange like that, but like um, you know, so Corny Weaver in Alien is just a fing like Great role. She's like a great example of like a, a complete character, and she was written as a male, and just they happened to cast a female, so um, that Didn't I'm sure played a part of it. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, just like I don't know, every once in a while, just be a little better writers, guys. Oh yeah, a return to better writing. I think. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? What a weird trope. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. One of my favorite trope. Godfather tropes. Oh man, <laughs> good I writing. Think Aliens reminds mm -hmm. me of of uh, I'm split on this because I'm happy that. Everyone has grown and we've progressed and understand nuance better, I think, as a movie going mm -hmm. audience and movie creating world. Um, I miss very uncomplicated villains. I miss mm -hmm. the German terrorists in Die Hard are bad. All of them are bad and mean and forget about them. Mm -hmm. And the aliens and aliens are bad. It's not like, oh, but they were made by this cyborg who was trying to find love and understand what it's like to be God. And mm -hmm. isn't that interesting? No, they're monsters, and Vasquez yeah. has a giant gun, and she only wants to know where they are and to shoot them, and that's like her fucking purpose, right. and she loves it, and I love it, and you love it, and we just don't have it anymore. Right. Well, I know that it's not mm -hmm. true to life that everyone has shades to them, but I just want a movie where they're, it's the bad guys. Yeah, and we agree. Well, I think we're kind of returning to that because, like, the death of the anti-hero is kind mm -hmm. of a thing now. Like, no one wants to see like. Johnny Soprano, you we're, know, we're, we're whining killing, about his life. We're killing the anti-hero, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. Spider-Man Homecoming, Michael Keaton is like uh, a blue-collar, down-on-his-luck guy who's yeah, mad that like weird. billionaires are moving in and ta and like yeah. destroying his business. And I'm like, okay, there are points on it. Uh, you're both right, Vulture and Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. You two men in costumes, I guess, <laughs> after animals. Sure. A movie like Serenity, you have one character who's very much on one extreme, who's like, He's just, he believes in this, this society that could exist. And you're like, ah, that's really complicated killing that guy. But then you also just have Reavers. It's like, oh, that's more fun. They're yeah. bad. I just want to watch them get blown up. Yeah. That's way more fun. Apex Penguin. Nice. Uh, is it weird to sleep with socks on? Yes. Oh, hold on. No. Slow your roll. At, at <laughs> night, yes. If for a nap, hey, anything goes. Sleep with socks on, yeah. I, Naps with socks uh, are great. Sex with socks, don't, don't do. Oh, uh, no, op the opposite. You should. It warms your body. This it's is scientific. Sex warms your body. <laughs> so do socks. <laughs> well, then choose one or the other. Otherwise, you're going to overheat. You're going to have a real problem I'm on your hands. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> get you home and take your socks off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, as soon as you get home, yes. you take your socks off? What? Yeah. You take shoes off and then peel those socks off? Absolutely. And you're like, I peel them off with my toes. And you're like, ah, oh, no. now I get to walk around on my cold hardwood floor. Yeah. With my, what mm -hmm. are the things and in between your toes, toes with socks? Oh. Toe jam. Toe jam. And you get to walk around and you're, oh, now I'm going to my kitchen on the linoleum and or tile that's uh -huh. cold and has crumbs on it. You, you walk around your the house. The kitchen's also hard one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the crumbs uh, oh, are everywhere. Okay. <laughs> I, the only time that I don't wear socks is because I got up in the morning and I don't have the patience to put them on. But I love socks. I, I have, love sliding around my I house like I'm in risky business. Mm. I've, I hate flip-flops. They can't stay on my feet because flip-flops yeah. don't come in half sizes. I don't like I'm a ten and a half, either. and so I, I always go big, and they, they flop around, and it's terrible. I probably have the hardest life of anyone. <laughs> um, I wear them because I hate putting on socks so much. Mm -hmm. And I've come to, to this office in America in shoes without socks, and no one noticed because I just didn't want to put on socks that morning. I feel like... And, the, and, and you... Monsters wear when you sleep. Yeah, I love. No socks. one told yeah. you you had to do that. You don't. You can I make don't, your own decisions. At night, yeah, I couldn't wear them at night. I think that that's crazy. You're yeah. crazy. <laughs> but uh, I mean, but socks during yeah. sex for body heat. 
Fucking mm. terrorist. Dear God, it's, I, you know, I'm yeah. cold alive. I'm a purist. I want to be completely <laughs> naked. <laughs> it's really important to me that I am not wearing a single thing. I will take off rings. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting all uh. of me. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> move off this. I thought this was gonna be a fun, like we all say no. And then oh, no, curtains, no, credits, no. and everyone's happy, and this person feels crazy. But now <laughs> I'm the apex penguin. <laughs> At J- Jables to the Max, what did you think of this year's Tony Awards? How, do you, how would you do a usual suspect? I'm going to tap out and just let you answer uh, this. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm tapping out. Sure. I guess off the top of my head, I'm really happy that Ben Platt won uh, for Best Performance of an Actor in a Musical. It was a really incredible performance. I saw it last December, and, and there's nothing like it. I don't know how this kid does it. I do know how he does it. He uh, will do the show and then do 20 hours of silence alone in his apartment and then do the show. Because the show requires him to sing and scream and cry like snot bubbling things oh, while wow. singing what? and hunched over. And he's like a, a completely physical performance. It's really strange. And everyone should go check it out if they can. It's good. Yeah. I don't like that the Hello Dolly performance was just David Hyde Pierce because he got Bed Midler. Use Bed Midler, you know? Kevin Spacey, bad host. Mm. Do you think he wears socks when he's silent for 20 hours alone in his place? Ben Platt? Mm-hmm. I do not. I think he goes home and he peels those is socks off. Is that what you think like... sex is? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm Pierce Morgan. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but we're I'm certain, Dan, if you had to launch some sort of campaign to like get flip-flops to start making half sizes, Piers Morgan would be way behind you, just having like a flip-flop over your genitals. <laughs> Finally, it's in half sizes. Oh, no. All right, one more question. Living Impaired 4 says, since 47 Meters Down is coming out soon, will there ever be another shark movie that even compares to Jaws? I think about this a lot. Mm, well, that We've movie made... has Mandy Moore, so it yeah. won. It beats Jaws. Mm-hmm. It has Mandy Moore. Oh, oh. Jaws had Mandy Moore. Those. Yeah, sure. Was <laughs> oh, <wait, wait>, <laughs> she the shark? Was she the shark's monster? Um, that, I, I don't know what, what like, that makes you as afraid of the water as Jaws did. Mm-hmm. Is that what they're asking? Or that what, make, what, affects like, culture as much as Jaws? We made one good shark movie. Yeah. We've done. And, I don't know. And, like, Deep Blue, man. No. <laughs> we made one good shark movie, and like. 16 terrible shark movies. They didn't even make two good Jaws movies, let alone two good shark movies. That's true. That's, yeah, there were no other I think and the like, thing about Jaws is like because the, it's not about the shark being the monster. It's about, is the monster there or is he not there, you know? Y- yeah, oh, I guess. I see, because he doesn't appear for so long. <laughs> right, that's what it's or about. Or she, so it's I not, don't know. It's not we're actually afraid of the monster. It's, it's, it's a he. Sharks are boys, dolphins are girls. Oh, oh that's true. Okay. Oh, but what if that was true? <laughs> 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 well, then let it be true for you. Okay. That's, All right. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Soren, where can, thank you for joining us this week. Yeah. Where can I find you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter at Soren underscore uh, LTD. That's S O R E N underscore LTD. You can also, uh, Friday, uh, for the next two weeks, three weeks actually, we're going to be doing a new mini series, a podcast mini series called Looking the Part, hosted by Daniel O'Brien and me. Yeah, it's about hair. Yeah, it's about the way that the physical characteristics of a character can uh, spoil everything about what they'll do before they even open their mouth or do anything. Mm -hmm. And we edit that part out and make it seem like it's just about hair because I want (laughs) our podcast to tank. (laughs) (laughs) Maggie, where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, You can find me at Maggie, M-A-G-G-I-E, May, M-A-E, fish, like the animal. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I'm Daniel O'Brien. You can find me at D-O-B underscore I-N-C and uh, tweet us the hashtag E-P-C-D. If it makes you feel good. If it makes you feel good. Okay, all right. (laughs) Hey, you like stand-up? Come see the Cracked Stand-Up Show. It's happening June 22nd at Meltdown Comics in Los Angeles. If you want to see amazing comics, including our own Josh Sargent, go to nerdmeltla.com slash tickets. And if you want to see me do a funny dance... Sorry, not today.